Hey, this is Eddie Hale, and yes, I'm filming this from my car because it's the only private place in the world. I want to talk to you some more about the pen tool. There's some rules of thumb that will help you make smoother paths, and so let's get down to it. In my class, I have my students draw around this template here because it gives them a chance to practice their pen tool skills. So I'm going to draw around part of that right now. Remember that if I click with the pen tool, I get straight line segments. That's not real exciting. Um, the thing I want to talk about is where do you put the next anchor point? So it's obvious that there's an anchor point here. I hope you would guess that there has to be a direction handle here because the path goes from being straight to being curvy. I look for the next place where the path changes direction. I know that I can make a loop with my direction handles, but right here it switches direction kind of curving up. So I know that I'm going to need an anchor point someplace in here. So I can move it later with the white arrow. I'm going to press and drag and see if I can get that to work. So I'm close there. I'm going to come back later and adjust that with the white arrow. Now the path changes direction to here. Whenever I see a straight line like this, I know there's probably a direction handle on both ends of that straight line. I'm not afraid of that class because I'm going to come back later with a white arrow and fix that up. I'm hoping that smart guides will help me align this next anchor point. I can hold the shift key too and it will keep that line perfectly straight. So I drag out a direction handle there. The first rule of thumb I want to talk about is one called the bump rule. I read once that when you have bumps like this you don't want to put anchor points at the top and the bottom of the bump. It feels like that would work, but it's the wrong way. I'm going to hit Command Z a couple times. What you want to do is put your anchor points on the sides of the bump. That's what they say, and I trust the experts. I go all the way over the bump, down the other side, and I put my anchor point on the side of the bump. Now I'm having troubles there. I can't get that curve to work exactly the way it should, but I'll come back with the white arrow and adjust that later. I go over the bump to the straight section, and I'm going to drag this way again. Remember dragging with the hind end of the tool to make that curve. Now I'll speed up the tape. I'm going to press and drag out here. Here's another rule of thumb or a question to answer. How far should I make this direction handle? Well, I'm planning on going all the way around this bump and down to this spot right here because that's where I sense that the path is changing to another direction so I think my anchor point needs to be there. It's also halfway over the bump, halfway between it and the next bump. And so the, I've heard this rule called the one-third rule and it said that the handle should be about a third of the length of that path. Well I can't judge that very well but um, I can tell that this would be too short. That's definitely not a third and it just doesn't have enough power to push the path out that far. So I'm going to guess that maybe that's about one third plus it just sort of feels right like that's got a lot of strength to it so the path will go out fairly far I think I'll go over here halfway down the hill and press and drag and that's pretty close again there will be some adjusting when I come back I'll go over the hill and I'll press and drag something like that and I'll go around this curve to the straight section and drag here so we've got the bump rule put your points on the side of the bump. We've got the one-third rule. The handle should be about one-third the distance between itself and the next anchor point. Um, there is another rule that I think is kind of neat. I'm going to drag a direction handle out here, too short, and then I'm going to drag a direction handle out here, and I want you to see that I can't make that nice round curve with just this one direction handle. The rule I've heard called the equal work rule. And what it says is, to get a smooth curve, these two handles need to be doing the same work. I'm going to use a trick I know. I'm going to hold the command key and get the selection arrow. I can lengthen this direction handle now and shorten this one and make them do equal work. And I'll be able to get a nice round curve there because these two are both doing equal work. I'm going to break this direction handle by holding the option key and spin it out this way. The final rule, one that I really like, a teacher friend of mine made up, it's called going down the road. I'm going to drag a direction handle out of here, and I'm going to drag it out too long on purpose just to show you an issue that could happen. I'm going to go over the hill, halfway down the other side, and I'm going to press and drag here. And here's what I'll see students do sometimes. They'll struggle to try to get that curve to match up there, 
And what I want you to do is I want you to recognize that at this point on the curve, the direction handles have to be going this way. They're a tangent to the curve line, but the way my instructor friend put it was, if you were in a car and this gray line was a road, at this point on the road, your car would be aiming this way. Your headlights would be shooting off the road like that. Your car would be right on the road like that. You would not be spinning around like this. You would be aiming down the road. So you have to go down the road. I can get all the way around this curve to here, I think. Now, if I was a car again and I came to the end of the road, my headlights would be shooting off the road this way. So I know that the direction handles have to go that way. I'm going to hold the option key and break this. If I picked my car up and turned it down that right angle road, my direction handles would be going something like that. I hope you can picture that. If that was a highway, I guess it would be a back road. My car would be aiming this way. Your direction handles have to go down the road. If this were a road and my car were right here, it would be aiming like this. My headlights would be going that way. And finally there. So there, you've got the, the um, where do I put the next anchor point? I'm going to switch to the direct selection arrow. Where do I put the next anchor point? You put the next anchor point wherever the curve starts going in another direction. I can shorten this handle up here. Start getting that a little closer. I think I have that anchor point in the wrong spot. Um, so that's one row. Go down the down the path. You could be tracing something, or the path could just be in your head. Go down the path until the the path starts going in a different direction, and that's where you drop your anchor point. I also try to tell students, go as far down the path as you can stand going. The next rule is the bump rule. Don't put your anchor points on the peak of the bump. Put them on the sides of the bump. The next rule is the one-third rule. Your direction handles will have to be doing, doing similar work to make a smooth curve and if you want to guess, it's about a third of the distance the path makes from one anchor point to the next. The, and then that other rule was the equal work rule. Handles need to be doing similar work if you want to get a nice smooth curve out of them. If they're not doing similar work, you'll have a weird pointy curve like that, Command-Z. And then the down the road rule. If you want the path to work right, your direction handles have to be going down the road. And then remember, you can always come back with that white arrow and adjust things later. So those are some helpful hints for drawing paths with the pen tool. Thank you for watching. Bye.